What happens if your motherboard fails and you need to retrieve data from your M.2 drive? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how, and it's gonna be the simplest and hopefully the cheapest method you can, apart from buying a new motherboard. So with that information, stick around, cause it's TechWiz time. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TechWiz time, where I help you save time and money when it comes to gaming and technology. In this video, I'm gonna be exploring what happens if your motherboard fails and you're using an M.2 drive on that motherboard. Now, the simplest way of retrieving your data from an M.2 drive is to get an M.2 enclosure, but there's a few details that you need to be aware of before making your purchase. The first thing that you need to be aware of is what type of M.2 drive you've got. Now, these two here that I've got, they're the Samsung brand. One is an 860 Evo and one is a 960 Evo. Now these are both M.2 drives, but they are both different. I'll zoom in on them both, but you can see here that the 960 Evo, the key is simply one slot taken out of the pins there. Whereas the 860 Evo, the key is actually two slots taken out of the pin configuration. So even though these will both fit in an NV NVMe enclosure, they both won't work unfortunately. So that's why I've got a few different enclosures here that you can use to retrieve your data from an M.2 drive. So what I've got here, I've got two Silverstone versions. One is the MS11 and one is the MS10. And I've got an Oroco version here, which is purely for the NV NVMe drives. I will get it eventually. So these two here are specifically for NVMe drives. They both offer 10 gigabits per second, which roughly translates into about a thousand megabytes per second. If you know the true math, then leave it down in the comments below. And the other one that I've got here is the MS-10. Now the MS-10 is for the SATA variant of the M.2 drives. So that's the 860 EVO. So just to clarify again, you've got the SATA M2, which is the 860 EVO, and that's got the two cutouts in the key. And then you've got the 960 EVO, which is the NVMe SSD M2. And that one there only has the one cutout from the key. It can get confusing, I know, but, but stick with me. So like I mentioned before, if your motherboard does fail, the quickest, easiest, and probably cheapest way, apart from getting a new motherboard, is to get an NVMe or a SATA M2 enclosure. In order to get the 10 gigabit per second speeds out of these, you will need to hook them up to a USB 3.2 gen port. Now, most new motherboards have the little USB-C port on them. That's generally the USB Gen USB 3 Gen 2 port, and that is capable of that bandwidth. Whereas the older style, you won't get as fast. Now, all three drives are relatively the same. I should say enclosures. You've got here, you can see the height difference is a little bit different. The width is a little bit different and the thickness is a little bit different on all three of them. This one here is the, I can tell straight away, is the MS-10. So that's the SATA M2 variant. This is the MS-11, which is the NVMe M2 variant. And this as well is the M2 dot variant. You do require a screwdriver with all three, but this one in particular, you can actually take it off purely uh, by just sliding along the heatsink there. And then you've got access to the drive inside. You still need the screwdriver obviously to take out the, the little standoff there. And then to attach it again, you just sim simply click it into place and slide it and you're done. So what I'll do is I'll leave links to these down in the description below. I will be covering NVMe enclosures in particular a little bit later on. So if you are interested in this sort of information, then make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell notification icon as well. So that way you can get notified when I do release a new video, especially if it's related to the enclosures here for the M.2 drives. If you're looking to keep up to date with everything that I'm doing with the channel and so forth, you can subscribe to my Twitter or my Facebook. Links for those will be down in the description below. If you would like to help support the channel, then I've got two ways of doing that. You can do it either via Patreon or there's also a one-time donation or buying me a coffee through the coffee link. And if money really isn't an option, then what you can do is you can help translate this video. I'll be leaving links down in the description to all my videos. If, you've, if you speak another language like German, Hindu, uh, French, Italian, any of those different languages that I don't obviously target, if that's your native tongue and you can translate from English into your native tongue, then yeah, definitely help out if you can 
that would be greatly appreciated. And lastly, I just want to say thank you for your support over the years. I really, really appreciate everyone watching these videos and commenting. It's, uh, yeah, it's been amazing. And yeah, it's going to be amazing going forth from here on out. So with that said, imagine, learn, create.